Hello, I am Vikram and welcome back to the video series about how to fly in X-Plane. This is our first ground school lesson and it will be about the theory of level flight. This lecture will prepare you for the next practical lesson, but it also will lay out a firm foundation for all the future videos. Uh, and it does it by introducing uh, certain important terms and definitions and by also describing and explaining uh, the important aspects uh, of airplane behavior in flight. Uh, so, uh, the topics of this lecture will be uh, first we start off uh, by talking about basic things, center of gravity, the balance and four basic forces. Uh, next we would move on to the fixed pitch propeller and talk how the propeller would influence the flight. Uh, also uh, we would talk about angle of attack and lift and uh, I will show you how those two things are related to each other and what uh, must be considered during flight. And then we finish off by talking about the control surfaces in the tail of the aircraft, including horizontal stabilizer, elevator and trim, as those three are the most important flight surfaces influencing the level flight. The purpose of this video is to give you a good theoretical understanding uh, about the uh, various aspects of level flight and also describe uh, what influences the level flight and what you as a pilot must consider when executing the level flight. So let's get started. Uh, the very first thing I would like to talk about is the uh, center of gravity. In this uh, video I will represent the center of gravity as such an orange dot on an aircraft. Uh, the center of gravity is an imaginary point of balance in an aircraft and uh, the best way to describe the functionality of center of gravity in an aircraft is to imagine a situation where we have some sort of a stick uh, on the ground and then we take an aircraft and put it on top of that stick so that the center of gravity is exactly aligned to that stick. And if you would now release the aircraft, the aircraft would remain standing on top of that stick without falling over. It would be perfectly balanced. How is that thing possible? Uh, to explain that uh, it, w it is better to imagine an aircraft as a metal bar or pole. Uh, which is asymmetrically positioned on top of that stick. In current situation the bar would topple over as it is asymmetrically put upon it. But let's load that bar. Uh, on the left let's put the heavy weight on top of that bar representing the engine and battery and all the other things that are in the nose of an aircraft. And on the right on the long uh, side of the bar, we would put a small weight representing the mostly empty tail section. And now, uh, although the weights are different, the distances from the uh, pivot point are also different. And uh, uh, the physics is that the heavy weight uh, on the short distance tries to bend the metal bar with the same force as the light weight but on the long distance. And this bending force is called moment. So the heavy weight on the left tries to rotate the bar uh, or bend the bar on the counterclockwise, uh, counter whereas the light weight on the right tries to bend the bar on the clockwise direction. So uh, we can say that equal but opposite bending forces or moments, those two weights create moments. Uh, so the equal but opposite bending forces or moments create balance. Uh, 
and the metal bar uh, loaded with such weights would be in perfect balance. And that's why an aircraft is also in balance. However, we can look at the situation also in a bit different uh, way. As the aircraft is standing on top of that stick, then that stick uh, must endure or take the full weight of the aircraft. Uh, the weight of the aircraft is transferred uh, to that stick. Uh, and uh, as the stick is uh, aligned with the center of gravity, we would say that uh, the center of gravity appears to be the only heavy point in that aircraft, or that the full weight of the aircraft comes from the center of gravity. And uh, the best way to describe or illustrate this uh, situation is to draw a single uh, down pointing arrow or vector from the center of gravity and call it the weight. So uh, the center of gravity is a source of a weight of an aircraft. Uh, and we can say that the aircraft has a weight. What else aircraft has? Aircraft uh, has, a, has an engine which produces thrust. Uh, as engine uh, rotates the propeller, the propeller starts to pull the aircraft through the air and so it starts to create airspeed. Uh, as the airplane is pulled through the air, uh, then uh, the wings start to create lift. Uh, but uh, by pulling the aircraft through the air, the downside is that the air starts to create resistance, which we can also put into this picture as a drag. However, thrust is uh, high and the airplane continues to uh, accelerate through the air and the airspeed would increase. Uh, this in turn would uh, increase the speed at which the wings move through the air, so wings uh, produce more lift. Uh, however, moving faster through the air would also increase the drag. Uh, this uh, acceleration would continue until the thrust is bigger than the drag. So, as the drag is smaller than the thrust, then the air airplane would still accelerate, the airspeed would increase, higher airspeed would cause the lift to increase, and also the drag would increase. Now, as the drag and thrust are equal, then the airplane acceleration would stop and the airspeed would stabilize. If we would now uh, decrease the thrust or the engine power, then the drag uh, would be higher than thrust and the airplane would start to decelerate. So the airspeed would reduce, slower airspeed would produce less lift and also the drag would reduce. As the drag is still higher than the thrust, then the deceleration would continue. The airspeed would decrease, uh, slower airspeed would reduce the lift, and also the drag would reduce. And now, as the thrust and drag uh, are equal again, then the deceleration process would stop, and airspeed would stabilize again. When you are during uh, level flight or any uh, cruise flight, then the stable airspeed is uh, very much desired. And in order to uh, get the stable airspeed, you need to keep the thrust and drag equal. Uh, you cannot usually change the drag much. The airplane fuselage is as it is. Uh, but you can change the thrust. Uh, so, uh, for each and every airspeed, there is a matching thrust. So that when you apply a certain amount of thrust, uh, the airspeed would stabilize at certain value. It of course depends on the configuration, but we are not going into details right now. So. Uh, 
to stabilize airspeed, you need to uh, create a condition where the thrust equals drag. And uh, in the previous video, uh, we already saw a stable uh, combination of uh, thrust and airspeed. Uh, namely, uh, one of the stable points was that uh, when engine RPM was at 2050 RPM, then the airplane would uh, fly level at 83 knots. Why is that so? It is so because uh, drag at 83 knots would equal uh, to the thrust at 2050 RPM. And that is the definition uh, of the stable uh, condition of the frag and thrust. Uh, also there is for example another stable um, uh, condition uh, where the airplane would fly at 95 knots when the engine RPM would be at 2300. That is again explained uh, so that the drag at 95 knots is equal to the thrust at 2300 RPM or that uh, um, Airplane fuselage generates uh, drag at 95 knots and that drag is the same as the engine producing thrust at 2300 rpm. And in order to fly at stable airspeed the pilot must uh, produce such a stable situation. And it is good if pilot knows these uh, airspeed engine and engine RPM combinations so that the pilot can already think or plan it in advance that if uh, pilot wants to fly at certain airspeed uh, pilot sets the RPM at certain value and the airplane would fly at certain airspeed. So uh, to review the uh, topic of the uh, center of gravity balance and uh, four forces, uh, then we can say that center of gravity is an imaginary point of balance uh, and also that it concentrates weight. Uh, and mm, the thrust and drag uh, would influence the flight so that if the uh, thrust and drag are not equal, then the airspeed changes. If thrust is bigger than drag, then airspeed would increase. If thrust is less than drag, then the airspeed would decrease. And if the thrust and drag would be equal, then the airspe airspeed will be constant. And I will also give you one piloting tip that when you are changing either thrust or drag, wait until other parameters stabilize. So, next topic is a fixed pitch propeller. Uh, so, when you uh, take an aircraft and start its engine, uh, then initially when the airplane is stationary, then the propeller would rotate on the vertical uh, uh, however, when the airplane would start to move, then the propeller blade uh, would uh, start moving along a spiral. As the propeller is turning, uh, but the airplane would be moving forward at the same time, then the imaginary path of the propeller blade would be a spiral. Uh, when the airplane would move at higher speed, then that spiral would stretch out. Okay, uh, in order to understand what this uh, causes, let's look closer. So, when the airplane is uh, standing still, but the engine is running, then the propeller blade is moving on the vertical plane. Uh, so, we can mark it. When the airplane would start moving, then the propeller blade would start uh, moving along the spiral. So we can say that the imaginary path 
of the propeller blade would tilt. Let's mark that angle again. And if the airplane would move at faster speed, then the imaginary path of propeller blade would tilt even further. How this uh, affects the propeller blade and uh, the engine rotation? Let's look closer at the propeller blade. So when the uh, airplane is stationary again, but the engine working, then the propeller blade would move vertically. However, uh, as the engine is running, uh, the engine uh, rotates the propeller blade and in order to rotate the propeller blade uh, through the air, certain amount of air must be pushed away from the path of the propeller. And uh, it takes a certain amount of energy to push that air away from the propeller's path. And um, uh, that energy is taken, of course, from the engine. Uh, so engine uh, produces output power, rotates the propeller, but part of that rotational energy goes into uh, pushing the air away from the propeller's path. Now, as the airplane starts to move uh, and the propeller's path would tilt, then the amount of uh, air that must be pushed away from the propeller's path, marked as red in this picture, would reduce. And if the airplane would move even faster, then the amount of air needed to push away would decrease even further. So we can say that at higher airspeed uh, there is less air that the engine must push aside. So that means that uh, less uh, output energy is uh, spent on pushing the air. Uh, that means that uh, more energy is uh, left over for rotating the propeller. And ultimately, that means that RPM or engine RPM would increase. And we can say that when increasing airspeed, the engine RPM will increase. And more generally, whenever the airspeed changes, the engine RPM also changes. And pilot must take this into account. Uh, Explain, uh, by the way, simulates this very nicely. Uh, so let's take um, a situation where you push the engine to the max and now let's see uh, what the engine RPM does at different air speeds. Uh, when the airplane is stationary, airspeed is zero, uh, as on the leftmost picture, uh, then the engine RPM is about 2330. Uh, when the airplane would accelerate to 65 knots, then the engine RPM would increase to 2400 RPM, uh, and then at 85 knots it would be 2500 RPM, uh, 100 knots it would be 2600 RPM, and at 110 knots it would be 2700 RPM. Uh, so that at constant engine power, the uh, RPM would change uh, as the airspeed would change. However, usually mm, uh, in flight you do not fly much at full power RPM. So let's uh, look at uh, more modest mm, airspeeds and power settings. Uh, so, w for example, when you want to accelerate from uh, 83 knots to 95 knots, uh, and when you are flying at 83 knots and 2050 RPM, uh, uh, and you would want to accelerate to 95 knots, uh, then, as you know, the 95 knots uh, is uh, stable when the engine RPM is 2300. So you would increase the engine RPM 
from 2050 to 2300 as uh, represented on the lower right uh, left corner uh, so and now as you would increase the engine rpm the airplane would start to accelerate uh, however when the airplane would accelerate to 95 knots the engine rpm has increased to 2400 rpm as the thrust generated at 2400 rpm is higher than the drag generated at 95 knots then the airplane would continue accelerating the thrust is higher than the drag and the airplane would continue accelerating and the uh, uh, acceleration would stop at approximately 105 knots when the engine rpm has increased to 2500 rpm at that point the thrust and drag would have become equal and the airspeed change would stop uh, but we can say that our plan to accelerate to 95 knots has failed let's take the situation other way if you are flying at 95 knots and 2300 rpm and would, and would like to decelerate to 83 knots uh, which is 2050 rpm then the uh, initial move would be to change the engine rpm from 2300 to 2050 uh, and the airplane would start decelerating once we have uh, reached 83 knots the engine rpm would have decreased to 1950 then again uh, the track at 83 knots is higher than the thrust at 1950 and the airplane would continue would continue decelerating and the stability would arrive somewhere around 60 knots and 1750 rpm and that's where the airspeed change would stop so again we can say that our plan to decelerate from 95 to 83 knots have been failed so how to properly uh, accelerate uh, and decelerate let's take the acceleration scenario first when you are flying at 83 knots and plan to accelerate to 95 knots then the initial step we did was correct uh, it is to increase uh, the rpm to your target rpm which is 2300 but now as the airplane uh, starts to accelerate and uh, reaches its target airspeed of 95 knots then it is uh, needed to reset the engine rpm to the target uh, uh, engine rpm uh, as the airplane has accelerated to 95 knots as seen on the right um, the engine rpm has increased to 2400 rpm and now the pilot must reduce the engine rpm to 2300 in order to bring the thrust uh, uh, to the same value as drag so the thrust and drag would become equal and the airspeed change would stop uh, and the same also with deceleration when you are flying at 95 knots and 2300 rpm as uh, shown on the left and then would want to decelerate to 83 knots then you would uh, uh, change the engine rpm from 2300 to 2050 uh, engine uh, correction airplane would start to decelerate uh, and once you reach 83 knots uh, and uh, when the engine rpm has decreased to about 1950 you would then increase the engine rpm back to 2050 in order to bring the thrust and drag to balance so remember whenever you uh, need to change airspeed uh, you would first set the rpm to your target rpm and once you reach the target airspeed you then reset 
the RPM. However, when you are uh, really experienced pilot uh, and mm, you know mm, that airspeed change would cause engine RPM to change, uh, then you could anticipate this process already. So, for example, uh, when you want to mm, accelerate from 83 knots and 2050 to uh, 95 knots and 2300 RPM, then uh, at, uh, when flying at 83 knots and 2050 RPM, you would, you would set the engine to 2200 RPM. Because you know that during the acceleration process, the engine RPM would increase by 100. So, and as you set the engine RPM to 2200, the airplane would start accelerating. And once the airplane reaches at the airspeed 95 knots, the engine RPM has also increased by 100 RPM at exactly 2300 RPM and uh, the airspeed change would stop so that uh, you would set the power only once and the airplane would gain the desired airspeed uh, and again the same thing uh, on deceleration when you're flying at 95 knots and 2300 rpm you would not uh, set the rpm to 2050 but instead set it to 2150 uh, because during deceleration the engine RPM would drop anyway. So and uh, when the airplane starts to decelerate the engine RPM would also start to decrease and once the airplane uh, reaches 83 knots then the engine RPM has also dropped to 2050 and again thrust and drag are are equal and the airspeed change would stop. So uh, to conclude this topic uh, the fact is that when changing airspeed the RPM will also change and in order uh, to change the airspeed from one value to the next uh, first you set the target RPM and uh, when you reach the target airspeed, then you reset the RPM. Uh, or uh, the advanced way, mm, when you want to do, uh, change the power only once, uh, is uh, that you know uh, the behavior of your airplane and you can anticipate the RPM change. So that when you're accelerating, you will set the engine power below your target RPM or when you want to decelerate then you set the engine RPM above your target RPM. So and that is the uh, things that uh, you need to know about fixed pitch propeller. Next topic relative wind. Relative wind is an airflow opposite to the direction of movement. So let's take an airplane and uh, when you uh, make the airplane flying or moving then the relative wind will be opposite. Uh, on the picture the orange arrow shows the direction of movement and the relative wind is an airflow against or opposite to the movement and uh, represented with blue arrows. So this is, seems simple. In order to illustrate this concept a bit more, let's take a bit uh, uh, more complex uh, situation. The airplane is approaching, trying to pitch up and then stalls and starts to drop vertically. Let's look at that again. So, and uh, the uh, thing here is that um, uh, at the end when the uh, airplane started to drop out of the sky vertically uh, the direction of movement turned vertical and also the relative wind uh, turned vertical so we can watch it once more and see how the direction of movement and relative wind are connected to each other <laughs> 
So, uh, it doesn't matter which way the airplane is positioned in the airflow. The relative wind is always airflow opposite to the direction of movement. What matters is the direction of movement. So, next term, wing cord. Wing cord is a straight line connecting leading and trailing edge of the wing. Seems simple enough. Uh, the trick is that the wing cord connects the trailing and uh, leading edge of the wing always. So if the uh, leading or trailing edge of the wing can move, uh, then the wing cord follows. The wing cord is a straight line connecting leading and trailing edge of the wing always. Uh, in the lower pictures uh, we have for example ailerons and uh, on the left picture the aileron is moved down on the right picture the aileron is moved up and the red line is the wing cord which follows it connects always the leading and training gauge of the wing uh, and when we uh, put these two definitions together then we can uh, define the term called angle of attack. Angle of attack is an angle between relative wind and wing cord. This seems simple enough, right? But remember that the uh, wing cord is a direct line connecting the leading and trailing edge of the wing. So uh, now on the lower part uh, uh, there are two pictures where I show the equal angles of attack. On both pictures the angle of attack are the same, although the wing position is different. But uh, as uh, wing cords have the same angle uh, to the relative wind, then the angle of attack are actually equal on both pictures. And the same is uh, in this scenario when the uh, angle of attack is aligned uh, to the relative wind and uh, in this situation we have zero angle of attack and uh, again in both scenarios wing position is different but wing cord is what determines the angle of attack so angle of attack is an angle between relative wind and wing cord so why is uh, angle of attack important? Where it is useful? The thing is that angle of attack uh, uh, or when changing angle of attack you change the lift. Uh, the best way to illustrate the relation between angle of attack and lift is to use an air file. This is a screenshot taken from the X-Planes uh, air foil maker. <coughs> and uh, you can uh, open the airfoil of the Cessna 172 SP yourself uh, below the picture there is a path of the airfoil uh, and uh, Cessna 172 uses an airfoil NACA 2412 uh, on the screenshot on the uh, left side uh, you can see uh, the lift coefficients uh, and on the center as a white uh, line there are uh, angles of attack or the degrees of angle of attack uh, and coming from minus 20, minus 10, 0, 10 and plus 20 again and the green graph uh, shows the relation between the lift and angle of attack. Uh, the main trend is that uh, when going uh, from left to right or increasing the angle of attack the graph grows from down uh, from bottom to top or from down to up uh, meaning that when you increase the angle of attack you increase the lift. There are a few things to note here however when uh, angle of attack is zero then uh, due to asymmetrical shape of the wing uh, 
it still produces lift. And uh, also uh, the trend of increasing the angle of attack increases lift continues until a certain point called the critical angle of attack uh, or alpha max and after that point when increasing uh, the angle of attack further the lift actually starts to drop and we can say that the wing will stall so um, however mm, lift as such mm, does not only depend on the angle of attack but it also requires airspeed so that we can say that lift is a combination of airspeed and angle of attack and uh, when we are talking about level flight <coughs> uh, then we also must note that in level flight the weight and lift are equal so in order to fly level we need to have a lift which is equal to the weight and uh, therefore we can say that uh, when we want to fly level then we need to keep the lift constant and in this uh, slide uh, I have a dashed line which represents the lift necessary for level flight or this is the lift which equals to the weight of an aircraft and if we would, we would now fly at certain airspeed then we would also need certain amount of angle of attack to establish that lift if the airplane would fly at faster airspeed then the necessary angle of attack uh, would uh, be less or smaller if uh, the airspeed would be smaller however then the necessary angle of attack to establish the required lift would be higher uh, and of course it is possible to fly at uh, such an airspeed where the required angle of attack would be zero so this um, picture shows that when flying at different airspeeds you need to have different amount of angles of attack to maintain the same amount of lift and that is uh, the thing you need to consider when doing level flight when you change the airspeed you need to change the angle of attack in order to maintain that level flight so let's uh, uh, wrap up uh, this uh, topic uh, that when uh, that angle of attack is an angle between relative wind and wind cord and when you increase angle of attack the lift would also increase but that process would continue until the critical angle which is uh, described as alpha max also lift is a combination of airspeed and angle of attack and uh, level flight at different airspeeds requires different angle of attack at slower airspeed you need a higher angle of attack at higher airspeed you need uh, smaller angle of attack to maintain the same amount of lift so next topic tail of an aircraft uh, this is a screenshot taken from the explain simulator uh, and uh, the tail of uh, aircraft has the following components of the tail it has the horizontal stabilizer which is a fixed uh, horizontal part of the tail then it has the elevator which is the moving part attached to the horizontal stabilizer then um, on the right uh, there is a trim tab uh, and then uh, airplane also has a vertical stabilizer uh, which is again stationary uh, attached to the fuselage of the aircraft and the moving part uh, attached to the vertical stabilizer is the rudder uh, on this uh, lecture I am going to concentrate on horizontal stabilizer elevator and trim tab as those three uh, determine the 
level flight characteristics of the aircraft. So, uh, let's start talking about the horizontal stabilizer. And when we go back to the start of the lecture and remember the picture I showed there uh, where the aircraft had the center of gravity and also the weight vector is pointing to the center of the earth uh, there also was a lift vector, the green lift vector uh, however note that the lift uh, vector is behind the uh, center of gravity and, and that actually uh, is a property of an aerodynamically stable aircraft. So uh, as the lift uh, is behind the center of gravity or is applied behind the center of gravity then the lift would want to tilt the airplane so that the tail of the aircraft would move up. But that is not uh, really desirable and it would make uh, flying an aircraft almost impossible. And that's why aircraft has a horizontal stabilizer which is a wing producing actually negative lift. It pushes the tail down. So that horizontal stabilizer is a wing that stabilizes aircraft orientation with a negative lift. Uh, so as the lift of the main wing tries to pull the tail up the horizontal stabilizer uh, pushes the tail down and uh, in effect keeps it all stable. So let's move on to the elevator which is the uh, moving part of the horizontal stabilizer. So uh, when pilot uh, pulls or pushes the yoke in the aircraft the elevator would move and by moving the elevator, uh, for example, when pilot pushes the yoke forward mm, and uh, therefore the elevator would move down, the elevator will change the amount of negative lift that horizontal stabilizer generates. And for example, when the yoke is pushed forward and the elevator is moved down, uh, then the negative lift generated by the horizontal stabilizer would decrease meaning that the airplane tail would move up uh, or uh, okay uh, another good place to describe an important term uh, when we would take uh, the longitudinal axis of the aircraft uh, shown here as a dashed black line and if we would take the horizon then the angle between horizon and longitudinal axis of an aircraft is called an attitude or pitch angle and it is one of the most important uh, term that the pilot uses to uh, fly an aircraft it is, uh, but it is determined uh, or defined as an angle between uh, horizon and aircraft longitudinal axis. So, uh, continuing uh, to talk about elevator, when the air, when the pilot would now pull the yoke mm, towards uh, uh, himself uh, or herself, then the elevator would move up and. Uh, negative lift generated by the horizontal stabilizer would increase and that in turn would push the nose up or tail down and uh, again when I would uh, draw the attitude or pitch angle here then uh, uh, this uh, way uh, it is a positive pitch angle uh, and this way it is a negative pitch angle so uh, and uh, uh, how the elevator would actually influence the um, aircraft in flight 
So when pilot uh, changes the pressure on the yoke, then uh, that in turn would change the position of the elevator, uh, which in turn would change the horizontal stabilizer lift, and that in turn would change the pitch angle or attitude. The airplane would turn in an airflow. Uh, that would uh, uh, change the aircraft's angle to the relative wind uh, and uh, that means uh, as the angle to the relative wind is changed then the angle of attack would change also. As angle of attack would change then the lift would change and if the lift changes then the vertical speed also changes. So that when pilot changes the pressure on the yoke, the ultimate thing is that vertical speed would change. However, as we are uh, dealing with level flight in this uh, lesson, then our goal is to actually maintain the vertical speed. So in order to maintain vertical speed, we need to maintain lift. In turn, we need to maintain angle of attack, angle to relative wind pitch angle or attitude, that means we would need to maintain horizontal stabilizer lift, uh, therefore we would need to maintain elevator position and that in turn would mean that we would have to maintain a pressure on the yoke and that is the problem. Uh, because pilot cannot uh, spend all its and all its and tension to maintaining the pressure on the yoke. Uh, and, but before uh, I will show you how that problem is solved, I would like to point out uh, 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 an interesting uh, connection. In order to maintain vertical speed, you need to maintain pitch angle or attitude. And as pitch angle or attitude is maintained uh, in relation to the horizon. This means when you are flying at constant airspeed and when you keep the horizon steady then vertical speed is also steady and aircraft maintains its altitude. So keep the airspeed constant, keep the horizon uh, steady and airplane altitude is constant automatically. So but uh, now going back to the problem that the pilot must maintain a pressure on the yoke. Uh, let's take a situation where uh, desired flight path requires elevator deflection. Meaning that uh, to maintain altitude at certain airspeed requires uh, that uh, you need to mm, keep such angle of attack so that uh, the pilot needs to pull the uh, yoke towards himself or herself a little bit and therefore the elevator would need to be deflected. Uh, that would mean that um, uh, as the elevator is deflected then the airflow going above the horizontal stabilizer tries to push the elevator away uh, from the airflow uh, and pilot uh, needs to uh, use his uh, force to keep the elevator in the airflow so that the uh, air mm, pilot would spend a certain amount of uh, manual energy or hand uh, force to keep the elevator deflected and that's why there is a trim so as the um, uh, pilot trims the aircraft, turns the trim down, then uh, it would uh, produce a balance. How? Uh, when the uh, airflow going over the horizontal stabilizer, uh, it tries to push the elevator uh, down away from the airflow. However, airflow going uh, below the horizontal stabilizer hits the uh, trim tab which is turned down and the um, airflow below the horizontal stabilizer tries to push the trim tab away also. Uh, and at certain point uh, those two forces balance each, 
each other out and the result is that um, the elevator can be kept uh, deflected aerodynamically so the pilot does not have to um, manually uh, hold the yoke anymore but the elevator stays deflected on its own and pilot flies hands off of course that doesn't replace the autopilot but still it is much much more stable much better than uh, flying an aircraft out of trim so uh, and uh, to summarize this lecture up then um, remember that uh, uh, when the thrust and drag are equal then the airspeed remains constant when thrust is bigger than drag then airspeed increases when thrust is smaller than drag then airspeed decreases and when you change either thrust or drag then give an airplane time to balance itself out uh, another thing about the propeller uh, when uh, airspeed changes then the propeller rpm changes and when you need to accelerate or decelerate then either uh, uh, anticipate this change or if you do not anticipate then when reaching target airspeed change the propeller rpm to correct value uh, then uh, using the angle of attack uh, as the airspeed increases uh, then the uh, angle of attack necessary to maintain the lift would have to be reduced so that uh, as the uh, airspeed would increase the lift would increase but by reducing angle of attack we can keep the lift constant uh, and uh, whenever piloting the plane use the horizon to uh, maintain your vertical speed uh, and finally when everything is uh, constant everything is stable then please trim the aircraft and uh, fly hands off because then everything stays steady on its own so thank you for watching this video and I hope you uh, have gathered uh, many useful terms and definitions from this video and uh, you are that much more prepared for the next practical lesson. Thank you and have a safe flight.